This is Kulali and her owner Garth. Garth was a successful engineer who started building Kulali as his final life project. Unfortunately, Garth never got to see her finished. I've been lucky enough to take the challenge on of completing her build and one day to sail her around the world. Similar to Garth, I'm a passionate engineer who loves to know how things work and how to build things. Join me on this journey to bring Garth's dream to life. This is Sailing Kulali. Welcome back to Sailing Kulali. It's day, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 something. That the day thing doesn't really work. So today I'm gonna keep working on the bearing for Kulali. This is an umpy, ultra high molecular weight. Ultra high molecular weight block, rod. Um, it was about $200. It's pretty common to be used in bearings because it's self-lubricating and it's very wear resistant. Better version of this would be something called Vesconite, which is also a thermoplastic, but it's about four times more expensive. So I've settled with this. The housing is gonna be made from this aluminum tube and this is the seal. So I'll show you the drawing of what that looks like. So this is what the drawing looks like of the rudder system that we're building. You've got the, this is the bottom bit of the bearing. So you've got the housing here, you've got the shaft coming through, and you've got the bearings either side. And this is called a locking ring or a thrust ring to hold the shaft from dropping down. Cool. But just to explain it a little bit more, basically this is going to sit in here like that and you know, that slid down, that's gonna rotate around here. I'm gonna polish this shaft up, and then that goes in. There's gonna be another thing down the bottom called the pin tool, I'm pretty sure. That's another bearing at the bottom. We'll look at that later. So I've set this up in here. This is the, um, it's gonna be the bottom bearing, and all I did was use a dial gauge to set it all up. Let's do this shit. So these bearings, uh, sorry, these, housings have been cut with a saw so the first step of it all is to make sure that this is square rotate it round square that off and then that gives me a starting point for the sleeve that's going to be sitting in here all right just to explain this what we have going on is the auto feed of the lathe which is this thing is spinning this automatically and feeding the cutting tool into the workpiece. So you can see that happening there. Nice. So that's 128 and a bit. I'm gonna take it down to 128. So that's the bearing block so far. The face has been taken back to be square and the, this surface is now being rounded because, because it's an extruded piece, it's not completely round. Um, so you can see like the inside wouldn't be round yet. So I'm, square, I'm rounding that off, that's faced off. I will make a step in here for the sleeve to go in and then I'll switch it around and then clean off that face there. I'm now gonna do a finishing pass on the outside to see how nice I can get that, and we'll see. So I saw this on YouTube once, you cut a strip. It's meant to be linishing paper, it's just normal paper. And you put it around there, and then you get pliers, and you hold it. I'm gonna turn the speed right down though. Ready? Here we go. Still not the greatest finish in the world, so I'm not so sure why, but if anyone can help out, that would be really good. It looks like almost the, the blade or the tool is dragging along the surface, making like these marks, but like it's really flat, but there's definitely still these marks. Cool.
So the next bit of this all is to bore out a little step in here. And the idea of that step is to help align the, the bearing sleeve to go into there nicely. So we're gonna try and do that now. It's pretty hard to measure these things because they're pretty, not very round, but let's say that's a hundred and a hole we need to have is a hundred, hundred mil for now. Let's just do a hundred mil. So I just bored out a tiny little bit. I'll measure that. And then that will give us our final setting on here to cut across to get to a hundred mil OD. All right, so there's a hundred mil step there now. And this tube is meant to have an OD of 100 mil, but it's not very round, this tube. So I'm gonna put this in and take that down to 100. All right, so I've flipped it around. Now this is the messy side. I've butted it right up against there, and now I'm gonna dial indicate it in. All right, so dial indicating's easy. Basically, the, this is a four jaw chuck. It's holding it from there and there, there and there. And all you wanna do is center this part like in the middle of the axis. So this indicator basically, I set that to zero. If this part was higher, this number goes up. So if this part was higher, and if it was lower, it obviously goes down. This is on zero at the moment. If I turn it, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down. Ooh, what happened there? Going down, it's going down, it's going down. So this, that means, if it's going down, that means the piece needs to come up. So we shall try to pull this up, which is loosening this, and you can see that goes up. And we go down with these, this piece, which is this way. There you go, 15. So as I rotate that, that's at 10. So it's getting much closer. So now, when I rotate this part, it's pretty square. Cool. All right, so that's all set to, that's all nice and um, dialed in. So that means that's um, in its axis. And I know how deep I have to cut into that. That's gotta be down to, um, down to that surface. So I'm gonna go in and go for the cut. Cool. So that is it. There's still, so it's pretty good. So I've been pretty efficient of how much material I've taken off. So that is still the original bit of alley. So that means I've only taken what wasn't concentric with this. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Nice. Woo. My first real machine part. Cool, so that's the, that's the part we just made. Seems like not much, but basically that's square with that. And <laughs> that's completely round. And there's a little step in here, a little groove, where the rudder tube will be able to sit in nice and square when I tack that in. And the idea is that this will hold the other bearing in place. All right, so this is the um, ceiling tube where the bearing on one side is gonna sit, bearing on the other. So this is gonna sit with that lit that we cut on here. But it's very critical that wherever this sits, it's gonna be directly in line with that, or very close to in line with the other side. So I've got a starburst on, in my mouth. So I've always had trouble working out how to dial in um, concentricity of this and that, because like, if you dial in this, like this could be concentric, but the whole thing could be on an angle. And I watched this really good YouTube video and it shows that you dial in this end, then you come to this end, and you dial in this end, and then you slowly work your way back and forth until it becomes accurate. So this end is sitting at 50, and it's going one revolution and a half. So apparently all you do is you lift this up, tap it, and check it again, so that's 30. And that's 20 now. So that's in line this way. And this side, that's 10. So that's 90. It means this needs to go down a bit. So that's 95. And this is, yeah, 
90 and this is 80 goes going up 60 so a little tap down 30 10 10 30 and 10 I think that's pretty square and tighten these up All right, so that's been dialed in. That's been dialed in across there. <clears throat> and I ran the dial indicator along there and it seems completely level or very level. So now I'm gonna take a face off there um, using that carbide bit. And then I'm gonna round that to 100 millimeters to match the bearing. <laughs> All right, so that's the, that's machined. So that fits on there, very square. And um, so that means I can weld that around when I need to. The next thing would be to flip that around, square that end off. And that, so that's square with that. And then the next bearing can be put on there. This uh, bearing housing can be put on there. But yeah, that's all for now. See you next time.